I was experiencing one of those nights where I wake up and couldn't get back to sleep. As my mind raced, I thought about how sick of this world I am. I'm constantly grieved by the evil and sin I see all around me. I feel like Solomon at times. All is vanity and chasing after the wind. Then the Lord began to teach me about what he experiences and experienced while on earth. So today I want to share with you some of the things the Lord showed me. The first thing the Lord impressed upon me was that he is able to sympathize with our groanings in this world. As the creator, he was also grieved by the fallenness of this world. Isaiah 53 verse 3 says, He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised and we did not esteem him. Notice it says Jesus was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Acquainted is the Hebrew verb yada, which means to know relationally. Jesus had intimate knowledge of grief and suffering. The word sorrow comes from the Hebrew root that often means to have terrible emotional and mental pain because of great sorrow. The word grief is one that refers to an internal sadness and affliction that just wears you down. As Jesus walked on this earth as the Savior of Israel and the world, and he continually saw all the sin and wickedness, and as he saw that he was rejected and that no one even looked to him for the salvation he could give, it just wore him down. It grieved him and made him sad. There were things that happened to him that caused him to weep. We often weep or get worn down over this world. Jesus experienced the same things. I can only imagine walking among the people of Israel and seeing the effects of sin all around him. What were some of the things that Jesus wept over? Well, he wept over the death of Lazarus. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. John 11, 33-39 Jesus also wept over Jerusalem. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave you one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. Luke 19, 41 through 44. Jesus also shows compassion to the hurting and the lost. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Matthew 9, 36. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them, because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. Mark 6, 34. He saw them like sheep without a shepherd. The spiritual leaders of Israel had become hirelings. The nation of Israel was lost, helpless, without direction and guidance, malnourished and lacking protection. They were in danger of falling off the cliff into a Christless eternity. And so he was gripped with compassion. Shepherdless sheep, people trying to make it on their own through life, spiritually speaking, they had no one to lead them on the path of true life eternal life. Jesus' compassionate reaction to the large crowds 
remind me of his cry in Luke 13, verse 34. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, just as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not have it. Jesus was also zealous for true worship. And he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. What the Lord impressed upon me was that he was upset that those seeking to worship the Father were hindered by the money changers at the temple. Animals for sacrifice needed to be sold because some of the pilgrims would have come from long distances and not brought animals along the journey. In addition, animals brought by some of the people were disqualified and they were forced to buy new animals. Also, money from other regions had to be exchanged for coins acceptable to the Jews, and of course, a fee was charged. This was a vibrant, illegal business in God's house. What had begun as a service to the worshipers had, under the corrupt rule of the chief priests, degenerated into exploitation and usury. Religion had become external, crass, and materialistic. The temple of God had become a robber's den. Out of love for the people, Jesus called out false leaders. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces, for you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who would enter to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel across sea and land to make a single proselyte, and when he becomes a proselyte, you make him twice as much a child of hell as yourselves. Jesus sympathizes with our grief, our groanings, our pain, in being vexed over this world like Lot was vexed over Sodom. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God bless.